<laughs> not surprised. Yeah. That's the right word though. Um, it's a it's a collection of work that uh, we've been working on for quite some time now, and um, the album is produced by Josh Wilbur. So he's done um, Lamb of God albums, Trivium, Gojira, oh, wow. um, and uh, so he's like a he's a really really sick metal producer. So when we got in the studio with him, we knew that we wanted to make a heavy record, and we wanted to kind of like have him kind of like coach us in the right directions and, and to kind of like uh, challenge us in ways that I think you can really hear uh, where My Cement is in 2019 uh, with the collection of music that we have. So um, so yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. We just dropped the title track and, um, and lyrically that song has a lot to do with um, uh, being above what holds you down. And uh, a lot of our songs always have that kind of like... Um, find self-power or um, overcome obstacles because that's something that we as like humanity and just people in general, us as musicians, we comment on it with our music, but everybody else kind of lives it in a way that uh, we choose to identify it with our music. So I think Earth and Sky as a whole kind of has a, um, a, really, a really awesome uh, collection of, of music that kind of like goes through all that, I guess. Yeah, this this one we wanted to record at home. So like, by that I mean we wanted to record it at a studio that's like really close to where we all live. So we kind of like, um, we found producer Josh Wilbur and he kind of lives not too far from us, like just twenty minutes up the road. Oh. So um, it it worked out that between his studio and um, our favorite studio in Southern California, Hybrid Studios. Um, between those two studios was how we recorded the album and and it was done differently because we were home so like we got to go home and see our families and like hang out at our normal yeah. spots and like eat our normal food and like <laughs> just kind of like it making albums is uh usually traditionally a lot different than that it's like you go for like three months yeah. and you live somewhere and you work with that producer so this one kind of felt like a little more relaxed which i think not that you could tell that in the music, but I think you could tell that in the caliber of the music because I feel like it's so next level. And the only way that we can really, truly do that is after making five albums, yeah. five different ways that what, what's going to be the most comfortable for us to be able to create the music that we love and that we want to define a mice and men right now. Yeah. So um, in a lot of ways, it was different and it was spread out over the course of like six or nine months or something like that where we would record in chunks of time like three or four weeks at a time and I think in that way too we were able to reflect on the music a lot and I guess like songs got cut from the album that we were like these are going on <laughs> and, uh, and after each like chunk of time we'd reflect on said chunk of body of work and we'd be like ah, this doesn't really fit with the vibe of everything because we wanted to make an entire like we wanted the whole album to feel like a cohesive unit of sound and we want it to be really heavy and we want it to be real aggressive so some of the songs that uh that we wrote kind of we didn't really necessarily work too well for the general sound of the album so uh it was just it was a cool process because we've never really gotten to do that usually yeah. usually we record everything and then that's that and then that goes on the album and so it was cool we had yeah. a lot of time to think about it Right, and that kind of, I guess for us at this point in our career, the band's been around for 10 years, we've been writing a Mice and Men songs for 10 years, that it just kind of like, at this point, we want to do what feels natural to us, because we've been challenged, we've been gone through the boot camps, and <laughs> recording boot camps and stuff like that, and not actually, but like, a lot of producers can be very, very intense, and uh, with Josh, he's not that, he's like one of our dudes, like yeah. sitting around <laughs> in a chair, and like hanging out with us, so like we... There was even times where we were like, man, we're literally just hanging out. Like, we got to get to work. <laughs> like, we're just, and that's kind of like, at this point in our careers, I feel like that's really important for us because uh, though this is work and this is our job, like, we want to have fun doing it. And um, and we've been doing it for so long that, that we want to be able to feel like we're, we're creating a nurturing environment that's collaborative as opposed to 
um, something that's different than that. And who knows, maybe in a couple albums we'll want to yeah. go back into a boot camp <laughs> type scenario and get our who asses knows. kicked by a producer. Exactly. But uh, we, we, we definitely like to chill a lot more. Um, well, I guess each song we want to make a statement, I guess, and when we release it, and in the traditional sense of releasing music, when you're on a record label, you kind of have, it goes one single, one single, one single, and then maybe the album comes out, or another single, or, you know, like, traditionally, they come out and they're called singles, so we, uh, we kind of, like, wanted to make statements with each time we're going to release a song, we want it to be like, um, for How to Survive, we were playing some festivals coming up and we wanted like, we wanted another Circle Pit song. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. so, so we're like, well, we're going to want to be playing this live and showing people like, this is what my cement sound is on our new album and, and wait till you hear the next one, wait till you hear the next one, wait till you hear the next one. So then um, it, we definitely do think about it and uh, kind of like how we want to showcase the album and set it up. And um, what we're most excited about is this album is that there's uh, you haven't heard all of you know like it's it's not all out there yet yeah. and there's still so much to be excited about on it. <laughs> I'm so stoked. And bands say that all the time, but like you're like audiences just they they won't be ready. Like they'll be expecting what we've already put out, mm -hmm. but at the same time with the with the new with the songs that haven't been mm -hmm. released, we still wanted there to be. Uh, a sense of excitement when you listen to the album and you realize that oh man every single one of these songs like could or should have been a single yeah. and ultimately like that's what we sought out to do with this album I mean I was actually just on the bus listening to it right now with um, Aaron and Ron oh, we were so talking cool. about it a lot and um, and I think uh, a song that really stands out to me that I think is just massive sounding and, and it was a really fun to play as pieces right. and um and that one's a I don't know it, it, it reminds me of a, kind of like a traditional of Mice and Men but on a more like grandiose level <laughs> I don't know it's it's kind of weird and it's hard to talk about it yeah, without giving sure. too much away but um there's still so many so many like the album I keep calling it the album is a treasure chest Right. And when you buy the physical unit and you get the the actual thing, you open it up and there's, like, your mind's going to be blown. Not to mention you're going to be listening to the album, you're going to be reading through the lyrics, you're going to be looking at everything that's in there. Mm -hmm. And it's all going to kind of make sense and you're going to kind of draw your own, not draw your own picture, but like, you're going to, you're going to see kind of how it all ties together. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, and it's going to be really cool. So I think expect the unexpected with the album okay. and like, if you like what's already happening, then you're gonna love the I do. Cool. I do. Hell yeah. Um, it's never... It was the first time that we had been approached. Um, okay. Yoltron and I and, and the band, we go back a long time because we were kind of coming up in the scene together back in early, like, 2000... Between 2007 and 2009. Oh, yeah. So, um... We were all living in different places, but we had been friends and had a ton of mutual friends. And um, and he actually hit me up on Instagram and was like, hey, I'm working with um, this other DJ Kezo. We do a lot of music together. And we're putting together an album with a bunch of our favorite um, bands from, you know, the kind of metalcore genre and stuff that we loved growing up. And I was like, hands down, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We got to do it. Because... Um, it's so cool as a musician to be able to collaborate with other musicians and kind of like, we loved it because that's a heavy style of music. Like there's mm -hmm. undeniable heaviness to the, I guess, um, I guess it wouldn't necessarily, it's not called dubstep, but yeah. much like any subgenre, you know, it's yeah. electronic dance music and there's a lot of really, a lot of heaviness to that. And so we were like, man, it'd be so cool to kind of like inject some of my cement into that. And kind of see what we get, and it it was a, it's a standalone. Well, it's a it's a it's a song on Kezo's album, but um, just kind of getting the opportunity to do that, we would definitely you know do it again. And and any kind of collaboration for us is like is super fun. It's kind of hard, I guess, in rock, or it's a little more taboo than it would be in like 
hip hop or EDM because having so many different record labels involved in traditional records as opposed to actual singles that stand yeah. alone, um, it can get a little dicey and that's kind of, I think, what turns a lot of people off on it. But, I mean, the fact that we got to, to, to work with two incredible yeah. um, EDM producers was, like, awesome. Like, we were like, oh, my God, these guys, I can rip on the drums. <laughs> Everyone knows their instruments. And these guys know their computers and they know their sounds and they know their synths and they know their drops and their this and that. And it was, like, it was so crazy to get to watch people work, you know, and kind of, like, meld all these ideas together. Yeah. So I would, I would definitely say we'd probably do it again. I don't... The future, I don't know what to do. Like we, it no. just kind of came about, and we got super stoked on it, and and it's been awesome so far. Um, it's gonna be sick. We've been friends with the For the Fallen Dreams guys for a really long time. They're a Rise, like an original, one of the original Rise bands. Oh, not original, original, yeah. but <laughs> I guess for what we think of like a metalcore when we were coming up. They had they had albums that and they had already been doing it before of Mice and Men, so we had kind of always listened to their albums and and felt like we connected with that sound a lot, and so for us to be touring together um, at this point in, in both of our careers, it's going to be so much fun, and uh, we love those dudes. They've always come out to our shows to come and say hi, and they're always like they're always wanting to hang out and keep that connection there, which is awesome because in this music industry and after as long as a band like us has been around you know like we've seen friends kind of come and go and stray and kind of go wherever but um getting to tour with them is going to be so sick thousand below they're like on fire right now <laughs> touring with everybody we're like we, want, we need a piece of those guys like <laughs> we love their music uh we hear that they're really cool dudes we want to introduce our fans if they don't know who they are yet we want to show them who they are. And uh, and then Blood Bather is disgustingly heavy. <laughs> and I cannot wait to watch them every night because I've seen, I've already looked up YouTube videos and it's crazy. And they're right. and they're like they're gonna set the night off like a friggin' like a bomb. <laughs> Seriously. Right. Like they're so heavy. And um it's a it's a solid it's a really solid heavy lineup and we're excited to get it to get to do that and get to get back in the like to us, it kind of feels like a a sense of like the OG OG rise like metalcore mm -hmm. bands yeah. like kind of doing something together that that's going to be really like really sick for our fans and for all of their fans to kind of see how it is and like in clubs and, and to kind of like sweat and get all friggin' crazy yeah. with us and like that's where we all kind of got bit by the bug to want to do this and and for us to be able to bring that with not only our style of, of metal or metalcore or what have you, everybody else's too. And, and, and as these newer bands, Thousand Below and Blood Bather, but then you have like the two like older bands like us, like it, it's going to be exciting and I can't wait for it. We're, we're doing this tour now and I mean, the, the tour has been going great and, and this was by doctor's orders for us to continue touring um, initially and I mean, after like the first few shows, you know, we realized like, wow, this is something really special. We've been watching tons of because a lot of these festivals are like mm -hmm. live streamed and stuff, so we get to review the tapes, and we're just like, oh my god, this is this is a My Cement in 2019. Yeah, this is where My Cement is 10 years into their career. This is the statement that we're making, mm -hmm. and um, and so far it's been so good. We have our friend Rod from Volumes. Um, holding down the bass duties, being our bass dragon. <laughs> he, he called himself the bass dragon, oh, wow. so he is the bass dragon. All right. He's got tons of skill, and he's an awesome dude to have around, so it's it's been a totally fun and uh, an exciting tour to kind of see. Yeah. I mean, I, I've said it before, but, like, I've seen every of my cement show, like, from from the platform of watching my dudes every <laughs> night. And, and, I, and I gotta say, like, these shows have been absolutely incredible. We're on yeah. stages bigger than we've ever played, playing for audiences bigger than we ever even imagined. And to see the statement that we make it 10 years into our career, what this album Earth and Sky is going to mean to not only us, but to our audience when it comes out, um, it's it's incredible, you know, and, and we feel like we're firing on all cylinders. Um, and, um, and the live show is, we've always pride ourselves on the live show. And, um, and so it's like if... 
you ever had any question, you know, come experience the live show because that's really, that's really, to us, that's what it's all about. It's about mm -hmm. that. It's, this is about community. It's about all of us. Not just like, we'll sit in a room this size and write an album and then make the album in a room this size. Yeah. And never expect for it to do anything like move 75,000 people at Wacken. Um, I guess I would if technology was good enough to where I wouldn't like throw up or yeah. like, get sick <laughs> or have to hit crazy gravity or something. All right. But we'll get to that technology soon, I'm sure, like within the next 10 years. Okay. Um, and if I had an alien, I think the alien would be, his name would be Schmalian. Schmalian? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and they're underwater. Would you be interested in like communicate with them maybe? Uh, I think <laughs> well, I think with music we have an interesting way of connecting with other life forms that may or may not be able to react to sounds and sonic stuff and like yeah. what did I just I just read like a, a thing about Skrillex and um, and being able to repel mosquitoes with his frequencies because of the frequencies that yeah. he chooses to use. Like, mm -hmm. these aren't happenstance things. So for another, like, another something like that, like, music will always be that first connector. Because language, mm -mm. It'll, be, it'll be sound. It'll be auditory response. It won't be dialogue. It'll be sound, I think. Yeah. And one of my favorite movies of all time, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that's how they were able to communicate was with sound and lights and visual and auditory stimulation. It won't be dialogue. It won't be, it won't be like that because we're not going to understand, you know? It'll be yeah. music. They'll be listening to... To your music. Yeah, yeah. They'll be <laughs> listening to a Mice and Men for sure. Earth and Sky. Maybe they will be in banging. Yeah, I hope so. They'll be in aliens. <laughs> 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 